This episode of Suds with Luds is brought to you by Early Bird Gummies. Early Bird Gummies are a recreational hemp product and contain 2.5 milligrams of natural THC and 12.5 milligrams of CBD in each gummy. They are formulated with a microdose of THC and are designed to make you feel good. We often say that Early Bird will put a smile on your face and are great for taking the edge off. The Suds with Luds discount code is SUDS, S-U-D-S. Good for 20% off a customer's first purchase. For me, take them at bedtime. Helps me get a great sleep at night. Try our early bird gummies. Well, welcome into another episode of uh, Suds with Luds. Um, I'm excited about this one today. Uh, by the way, we are on the Dub Network. Uh, I have the privilege today of hanging out with Keith... Wellman and Ryan Young from the Dallas Warriors. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Good to be here, um, Craig. I'm, I'm very interested to hear how it got going, all the things that you do. And, you know, just from a military standpoint or veterans, uh, you know, and I, I saw something on somewhere on one of your websites. You were talking about rehab, really good rehab for the guys. And I'm, yeah. I don't put hockey re – our rehab – is after the game's over when we have to go get things stitches and things fixed. So um, I'm interested to hear that. Uh, well, anyways, Keith, you go ahead. Why don't you start since you are the president? Yeah. Ryan's the VP, so I guess you got to start <laughs> first. Um, go ahead and tell us uh, how this thing got going and and, and how how it evolves. Yeah. So our uh, our founder Chris Whipple back in 2018 um, came up with a concept. Had basically gone to a tournament from a USA Hockey uh, Disabled Veterans Tournament. And this Warriors concept had kind of been around in different places um, and said, you know, we need to have this in Dallas. You know, there's a ton of veterans in Dallas, whether they know about hockey or know how to play or not. Um, we got to have something like this to get veterans on the ice, uh, disabled veterans. And then we play nationally, you know, four to six times a year. We'll play against other disabled veteran groups, um, uh, you know, anywhere from. Minnesota, Chicago, Colorado, Philly, St. Louis. I mean, there's program. There's about 45 programs. So how often us. will you guys travel? Uh, we travel four to six times a year. Uh, we'll go in January over to St. Louis, um, and then March and October, and we got another one in June. So um, yeah, there's a lot of different tournaments throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Ryan. So well, you, you have to babysit this guy, or is it is it normal that it, it always seems the presidents get the big title, but the VPs are the one to do all the work? Absolutely. Yeah, who is that the way it works? Who got this all set up for them? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> no, I uh, so I was kind of late to joining the Warrior program. Uh, you know, Keith's kind of been around since it came about here in Dallas. Uh, I didn't actually join the team until 2020, mm -hmm. and you know, I knew a few guys that were on the team, but I had. Uh, and, and we'll probably dive into this a little bit more, but like my post-military life, I didn't do a lot of veteran stuff. I just, it wasn't my thing. I, right. For whatever reason, I just didn't really feel like I needed to get involved with it. And then, uh, you know, January of 2020 came around. I said, all right, I'm going to sign up. And then COVID hit. And we didn't get to start. You know, I didn't get to join the team until mm -hmm. later that summer. Uh, and then quickly kind of realized, hey, this is something I really enjoyed being around and I'd like to do more to help out. So that's when I ended up, uh, I took one position on the board and, uh, very quickly uh, was moved up into the role that I'm in now. And uh, it's been great so far. Uh, like you said, with the travel tournaments and stuff, it's great because you get the guys together again. You know, you get that, that camaraderie, that yep. stuff that they're missing from being in a squad or a platoon. And yep. uh, especially when, when Dallas goes to tournaments, we take as many as three teams on different skill oh, wow. levels. So really? we have our developmental team, you know, our C-level team, sometimes our B-level team, depending on how many guys we can get to go. And uh, so, you know, you kind of get those little clicks together, you know, and then but you have the bigger group. So uh, traveling to tournaments and doing things like that, that most of these guys either just started playing hockey. A lot of them don't have a real hockey background. So yeah. when we when we did St. Louis last year, we actually chartered a bus. Uh, so well, it was almost like, you know, wait, when you got there or from here, no, from here from to there. Here. Oh, that's a road trip. Yeah. It was a road trip, but it was a it was a hockey road trip. It was mm -hmm. all of us together in the bus with, you know, I mean, we loaded up the coolers and yep. threw our gear underneath. Right? And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, we had a good few people had a little more fun time than others. On well, you that guys trip, have my contact info. So those yeah. are my kind of trips. You ever yeah. want to go on a road trip with yeah. us? We'll take you. Let's I don't want to play when I get there. I just want to do the road right, trip. Right. Part. Yeah. We'll, we'll slap a logo on you and we'll yeah. say you're okay. a special advisor <laughs> or something. Well, let's talk about a little bit about your backgrounds. Yeah. You know, as far as service and things like that. So I was in the military. I was in army, uh, 2004 to 2010. 
Um, I was a combat medic and deployed in 2005, 2006 to Iraq. Um, I was in one of the first units that got extended, so my whole tour was about 16 months um, overseas. And then I got out, had no idea what I wanted to do, but ended up getting into sales and have kind of done all of that. But I never played hockey growing up. I didn't start playing until I was 33. Uh, my son is in the, the Metro Hockey League, and he wanted to play, and I've always said I wanted to coach. Mm -hmm. And so saw an ad for the Dallas Warriors, got connected early on in the organization. They outfitted me from head to toe, got me on the ice, yeah. and uh, the rest is history. I've been skating for about four years now. Yeah, Ryan? So I was in the Army from 2000 to 2011. Uh, did a couple deployments uh, in 03, and then again in 04, 05 with a combat heavy engineer unit uh, here in the Dallas area. Um, what is the combat heavy? So, what? so it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of construction, heavy construction okay. type stuff, but we also have a, a small element of, you know, some infantry guys and stuff that are attached to us because we're doing road jobs and building schools and things like that outside of the wire. So, so, you know, if you know that term at all, but, uh, no, but explain it. Yeah. Just when you're not inside the base, when you're not, you know, when you're in Iraq and you're outside, outside the wires, when you're out okay. doing missions and things like yeah, that. So, okay. So our company would do a lot of uh, you know road projects, um, infrastructure type work, and so we uh, we just had a lot of heavy equipment, a lot of bulldozers and big things like that. So, um, and from there, I you know I worked in maintenance, so I got to you know at a young age got my hands on a lot of that big equipment and, and got into kind of maintenance management. And from there, my career moved in you know once I got back on the civilian side. Uh, well, I did a short stint as a contractor. I went back overseas as a contractor on the. Uh, the MRAP program, the mine resistant ambush uh, protected vehicles, okay. the the ones we had later on in the uh, um, Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, did field service work with that. So I was actually back overseas with the troops, um, giving them technical support, um, training, drivers training, maintenance training, just whatever I could do to help them out. So sure. it was uh, that was a great gig. If I hadn't been married and had a kid, I probably would still be doing it. To be honest, that was a yeah. it was yeah. right up my alley. But Came home, got done with that, and I said, I think I'm going to be done with military stuff now. Um, so now I do just fleet maintenance or uh, fleet compliance management for a, I'm at a pretty big electrical company now that um, it's a pretty good gig. I can't complain about it. So, but are, Do you guys know Jared Derube? I don't know. No, I haven't met him. Okay. No. And it's only because Jared's got a, he's ex-military also, and, and he, he calls it, he, he cleared caves. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. uh, okay. And, and I didn't say anything. I pretended like I knew what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> and then finally we had gone for a couple beers one night and we were yeah. just talking and, um, I, I was like, what, what does that mean? You know? And then he kind of right. explained what the, you explained the role because I don't want to explain it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, uh, and then from there, I guess my hockey background, um, so I actually was a, you guys came to town in 93 mm -hmm. and I started goofing around with a tennis ball and a broom in my driveway when I was, oh, no. you know, in middle yeah. school. Uh, I actually just grew up playing roller hockey uh, yeah. up until yeah. I was in my late 20s. And then, because uh, at the time when you guys moved to town, there wasn't a lot of ice around for us to play on. Yeah. Uh, if there was, it was really expensive. And so. Uh, it's not any cheaper now. It's not, it's just, but my income has increased from uh, being a 12 year old to <laughs> right. a 40 year old yeah. adult. Yeah. So I can afford to do it now on my own. Um, so yeah, I just grew up playing, uh, got into ice mid 20s and then. Um, you know, I've played almost every rink around here, probably, mm -hmm. um, and got on with these guys. And this is where I spend most of my time now is doing warrior stuff. So, Well, Keith, you had mentioned you didn't know what you wanted to do when you got out, right? Yeah. And I find that nor uh, that's a common theme, I think, for us. I think that we feel it's going to last forever or everybody's going to take care of us when we're done playing. And when yeah. you're done and you played for us, you know, you played in the, the NHL and you guys are military uh, and, you know, we, everybody knows all the stuff that you guys do and what your families and everything go through. Is, is Do they have programs to try to get guys? I mean, is it has it changed at all? Like when you are done, that kind of gives you a path or like ask you what your interests are and what do you guys want to do and get Not that you know, but is there anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there are. Or are the guys too young to even know? Are they, you know? That's the hard part, right, is, is when you take this down to a granular level, most guys, when they get out of the military and, and gals too, they just don't, hey, this is what you've done, right? You started at 17, 18, 19 years old, and you know, now you're in your mid-20s if you go a short tour or you're you know, in your mid-30s. Um, and unless it's something related to like your training, right? Mm -hmm. Like Ryan went directly into work that was similar to what he was doing with the military. 
Um, I didn't want to go into medicine and I knew when I got out, like I'm done being a medic. I don't want to do anything. How did you, related. how did you become a medic? Like you said, you started at 17. I started at, uh, I 18? went to basic at 19. I turned 20 and, uh, or no, I turned 19 in basic 20 and 21 in Iraq. Did you have any background in medicine or no. any kind of, well, how do you, I don't I know. I picked it. I picked it from a list. So Basically, it's just on the job. You go into the recruiter and they say, okay, based on your testing and your physicals, here's a list of jobs that you have access to. What do you want to do? And I knew that I wanted to be like special forces. And I had these like ideologies of like going to ranger school and all these other things that I wanted to do at, at 17, 18 years old. Right. But I'm colorblind, so I couldn't do any of those things. Okay. Um, and my, my thinking was everybody needs a medic. In order for me to get the closest to the front lines and do the things I want to do, I need to be a medic. And so that's why I picked it. Um, and then I went to about 16 weeks of training that was all medic related. And then from there was attached to an infantry unit and deployed as soon as I got to my unit. So as far as the medic goes, because I'm, you know what's going through my head is MASH. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of that. What, <laughs> is it called meatball surgery? Or, I mean, is that kind of what you do? I mean, is it? It are depends you on where fix, you are. You know, wounded uh, like getting in deep into it or yeah, so just my, enough to get them back to the right spot? My side of it was basically, it, it's similar to like an EMT on the civilian side. Um, obviously, there's a lot more training, a lot more trauma type stuff that we dealt with. Um, but the idea is stabilize and move. Um, you know, if somebody gets hurt, you're trying to stabilize them, get them to a point where you can get them to the next level of care. Um, and some stay in some points, like I was in Western Iraq, like way out in the middle of nowhere, literally had moon dust that was like this deep and, right. you know, it was up to our knees that we were walking through this fine sand that gets into everything. Um, and in that group, I, we had like a mash type station that we had built and it was the best that we could do with what we had. And, um, anybody that got hurt, we pulled them into there and then we called in helicopters to take them to okay. Baghdad. Or so it to, is similar to MASH. It's very similar. Yeah. As you get like way out there, it's it's very similar. A lot less comedy. Well, that's not always <laughs> true either. There is a lot of comedy that happens, but it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's similar. So did you ever go, what the hell did I get into? Or did, I mean, did yeah. it ever go where you're, <laughs> you were trying to wanted to switch gears? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, for me, it was interesting because I was on the, uh, it, that didn't happen to me in the infantry side, right? When I was with the front lines, I knew exactly what I was doing and why I was there. Okay. Uh, as I transitioned out from my deployment, I got attached to a hospital and I'd been there for two years. And at one point, I'm just sitting there like, I'm seeing the same cold, pink eyes, sick, basic trainees that, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, I, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I was I was going after. And so you definitely have those moments where you're like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. Where do I go from here? What about you, Ryan? So, you know, my primary job in the, in the, so when I joined, I was actually 17. Actually, when I went to basic training, I was probably the youngest person in the Army at the time. Uh, I did what was called the split option program. So I joined, went to basic training the summer between my junior and senior year in high school, came home, finished senior year. Then I went to my job training the next summer. Okay. Um, so it was a little different, you know, like I spent the whole year, my senior year, you know, I was already in the army, you know, or in the reserves, um, you know, came back in really good shape. You know, I only got like a week of summer vacation that year, but came home in the best shape of my life and, uh, you know, had a good run with that. And, um, but my primary job was a uh, power generator repair. So my first assignment was with a, actually a medical unit, a dental unit actually out of Siegelville in uh, Southeast Dallas. And uh, so we had like 20 or 30 generators and we were set up where we could go into, you know, Kuwait or Iraq or wherever we were at the time, set up dental clinics at all the bases as we continue to move forward. Yeah. Um, but everywhere we went already had electricity, like they already had a big power set up. So uh, I got to do a lot of cool stuff. I got yeah. to do a lot of convoying around and, and, and a little bit more of that type of stuff. Um, you know, the nice thing about being deployed with a bunch of dentists is... Uh, you get free dentals? Uh, well, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, <laughs> That all, you know, that's good for hockey players. It's it real is, good for hockey know, players. Yeah, I was saying really the same is. thing. Um, you know, we would have stuff where like, oh, we need to go take mail to all, everybody at all the other bases. And somehow they would loan us like these Land Rovers. And we just, I just get to drive all over yeah. the desert in Kuwait, which was kind of neat. Uh, and then I, I don't know how many people would actually call driving around a desert in Kuwait neat. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was 19. You got to get to know Ryan. Yeah. Time, so, uh, and then when I went back over with the engineers, it was a completely different, you know, situation we were you know north of baghdad in a place called taji and we were there for the whole year and um 
How'd you know? you sucks, by the way. Yeah. Oh, it was, I, it, yeah. It, I was it, stationed there for four months for my extension. And we were there for sucks. the whole year. So and awful. you loved it there too. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. And our, my company or our battalion actually lived right next to the fuel farm. That's where they kept all the fuel for all the trucks and everything. And so we were just constantly catching all those stray rounds. You know, they were always yeah. aiming for, you know, mm -hmm. missiles and mortars and stuff for the fuel, but they didn't have any way to aim very well. So, you know, We'd be working in the motor pool and stuff would just land in the yard and it was a little bit stressful, but uh, I would. It, uh, uh, it sounds like you know yeah. one of those things you just kind of get used to. It. Yeah. I mean, you really don't have any other choice. But so then, tell me, how does all this kind of tie into hockey? Like yeah. you know, and because I, I read something where you, it's kind of rehab, therapeutic, I, I guess for you know veterans and guys that have been in the military, men and women. How how does it relate? So the the our tagline is from the front line to the blue line, yeah. right? And the concept is that when a lot of guys come back, you know, you talked about transitioning from like this professional career to it, it's very similar. Like we're transitioning from the military. A lot of guys have been used to the barracks or been used to I've got a group of fifteen to thirty people that I hang out with every single day all the time the right? team concept team camaraderie yeah, kind of thing yeah. okay and it's the same thing in the military so like whether you're stationed stateside or you're overseas when i was overseas i was with an infantry unit i had a group of 33 guys that we literally did everything together i mean everything mm -hmm. for 16 months everywhere that we went we had four vehicles we piled everybody into the vehicles we went on missions together or we went to the defect together we went everywhere right um dining facility by the way <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> and um and so the idea is you know you have that same thing but now when you come to civilian life if you stay close to your family maybe you have that kind of nuclear network where it's like my family and i have these people but most just end up landing somewhere well do you purposely try to recreate some of that stuff like that's what you were used to and or, or is that just organic? It's organic. Okay. So, I mean, we show up to practice and you've got, you know, 15 to 30 guys that show up and we're all in the locker room and we're shooting the shit and, yeah. you know, picking on each other like you yep. always do. And it's the same. It's so natural to the way that like we were all in the military. That's the idea is that camaraderie, that locker room feel is the same as it was when we were deployed or it's the same as we it was when we were in the military and we all have that common bond. So, you know, we got a lot of guys that have physical injuries, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's loss of a limb or, you know, things that you can see. We got a lot of guys that have like mental health sure. stuff and PTSD and, you know, it, that transition from military to civilian life may or may not have been, you know, real real smooth yeah um you asked a question earlier about you know are there programs there are you know there's a lot the the military at least the army as a whole has kind of tried to do some things there's like a a cap program that we had to go through before we got out where you know you go to these classes they try to tell you what it's like to be a civilian and a lot of times they're blow off classes you know they don't feel like they relate mm -hmm. um and then there's programs where like you can go to school or you can go to learn a trade and like there are some things that are, are resources that are available to help you to transition, but a lot of those don't help on the mental health side of things. They don't right. help you to realize that there's no like there's nobody telling you where to be, uh, what to wear, and what you're gonna do that day. Like when you wake up and you're a civilian and you have all this freedom, sometimes that freedom is the problem. Like you just don't know what to do. Um, and Too much so, time on your hands. Yeah, and so and that's what that's what it is for young players that come in the league, and especially today, that the salaries are different. I mean, I think they're coming in. The lowest you're going to get as a rookie is seven hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. right? And they're some of them are 19, 20 years old. And the next thing you know, practice is over. You go to the rank here. They're at nine o'clock in the morning. You go to practice, and at one o'clock you're done. Yeah, you know. And yeah. so, what do you do? You know, and so you're trying to keep them active and, and the whole team concept and things like that. And you, yeah. because it's where bad things happen. Now there's there's way more now information and there's more help that well, at least from a hockey standpoint and being able to work with younger players when they come in the league. Yeah. Have certain people come in and talk about here's what somebody in the bar is gonna try to get you to do and here's how they're gonna do it, or here's how they get you off off the track. Yeah. And so now they've, there's more awareness, at least things to look for. So, well, yeah. and you see a lot of um, it, this is outside looking in, right? Like I, I've never been a pro hockey player, but you know I, I've 
big Stars fan. I follow uh-huh. some stuff. And so, you know, you hear about the the veterans giving back to the young guys and, you know, giving them rides around town and making sure that they got somebody to have dinner with and they're traveling and stuff like that. And it, it's kind of that same Is concept. Is that what you guys, your, not model creatives, but like people that are new come in trying to help them? Because I'll just, I want you to finish that. Is that... Um, in Montreal, <coughs> Montreal Canadiens, I was a rookie. There's a thing on the wall, and it's in French. Now it's in French and English. But to keep it short, it, it's actually from a poem, Flanders, uh, Flanders Field or something like that. I'm, I think that's what it is. Um, but it's basically from 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 these failing hands, we pass this towards yours to hold it high, don't ever let it burn out. And it, and it's and I I never understood why it was there, what it meant. I never I was just scared shitless. You know, as a rookie, you don't <laughs> ask. <clears throat> First of all, I didn't know what it. You know, it's from French, but yeah. Um, but what it was is, and you could see it. And I played with some Hall of Fame guys, Larry Robinson, Guy Lafleur, guys like that. And they were, you know, midway through their career when I was there. But you could see how they were helping us. A kid like me, you know, didn't know shit about what was going on but helped you off the ice, on the ice, you know, coaching, all that other kind of stuff, that was their way of giving back. Yeah. And it sounds like it's very similar. And because you know everything that happens when they come out when they come out of the service, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, and, we, you know, we don't, I wouldn't say we really get a whole lot of guys that come right out of the service into, okay. uh, into the Warriors. Usually they've had that time and they're kind of looking for something to do once they realize they have that spare time on the it, are, they, are they bored or or, or they just need something to occupy it's, their time it's a little bit of both something constructive um, you know we had a big um, i would say that even though it was in the bubble year for the for the stars mm-hmm. after they made the finals that year right you know it re-energized the want for hockey or the okay. excitement around here yeah. so we had a number of guys come in that were like man hockey's awesome and I, you know i want to start doing this and then they find out about us somehow and um, you know, I think like we mentioned, we have, you know, we've done gear drives. We People donate stuff to us all the time. So we have a storage locker just full of equipment where we can take a guy that's never been on the ice, put him head to toe in gear, and, le- and they can try it out with having to make a big fin- fin- mm-hmm. uh, financial investment. And, uh, you know, you see those guys, uh, you know, sometimes they latch on real quick. We've had some guys that come out and try it, and it's not really for them. And, no. you know, we may not see them anymore. Uh, other guys come in, and they're they're all about it. And so... That's where, you know, Keith and I, you know, we tend to have guys that we kind of, I don't want to say latch on to, but, you know, we, uh, the coaching, kind of like you were talking about. Uh, it's more yeah. that they latch on to us. You know, they I latch know. on to the program. They get excited about it. They go, oh, wait, you know, I can go to Vegas and play in a, yeah. like, I can be like a, a, a real hockey player. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's not just beer league and rec stuff. And have you ever worried about none of the guys coming back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That Absolutely. Was against, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That yeah. is a thing, yeah. you know, especially as leadership in the organization, you know, it, there have been times that we're like, hey, buddy system man you got to find yeah. somebody to latch onto that guy yeah. and, and and keep them yeah. keep them sane keep them going and but it's really cool when you see those guys like they go to their first tournament they go kind of nuts right because you're away from it you're away from work it's like vacation you know things get a little crazy maybe you play a couple games but then you see you know especially if they they have a history in hockey they've played hockey for a long time they see the new guys who have never skated before and they see them doing it and like trying to get better at the game and they're like oh i get it like those are the guys that when i'm in practice i can pull them aside and you know show them how to use their outside edges better sure. or i can show them how to you know take yep. this shot or positioning in the game and and so they're trying to pour into guys from a hockey perspective but then we get off the ice and we all go to the bar and we're talking about you know old military stories and what did you do while you were deployed or you know who were you with that's where and the therapeutic side of things yeah. come in uh, it's just an avenue to vent. And it's and it's all organic, but yeah. it's, you know, you ask where the similarities are. That adrenaline rush from playing a game, you feel like you're going 1,000 miles an hour, don't ever watch your video because you're skating like a fool. But, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that feeling of the first time you score a goal or the first time you set somebody up and you actually meant to do I don't, it. I never had that feeling a yeah. lot. <laughs> scoring the goal. <laughs> but that, those are the types of things that, you know, they get guys hooked to the game. And then it's like, okay, I've got this outlet now. I've got something that my wife told me I I got hurt. And so I took a couple weeks. She goes, I like you better when you're playing hockey than when you're not. I was like, hey, that's a good point. Maybe that's because you're not at home. (laughs) No, my wife would agree That's probably true, too. Uh, I just had both my ankles redone, and I've been off the ice for like six months. And Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday is going to be my first practice back on the ice. And like the last month, my wife's been like, I think you really need to get – 
out of the house. She's back, like, she's back on the ice. Yeah. You know, well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. One thing that a lot of our program offers too is, you know, it gives guys an opportunity to uh, talk, maybe uh, get into some things that they don't normally, you know, feel comfortable talking about. Um, like the 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 Suds of Bloods you did with Stephen Johns was a yep. great yep. great episode. You know, I rewatched that, that one just yep. the other day just to. Uh, you know, kind of highlight the, you know, we're all going through stuff, especially the guys that are dealing with, you know, whether it's anxiety or depression or PTSD. PTSD yeah. is a big one. I mean, yeah. brain we, injuries we, are huge. Yeah. We, you know, because some of our guys come to us already with some sort of traumatic brain injury. Sure. Maybe they got blown up in a, you know, roadside bomb overseas. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're good now, but, you know, you put them on the ice and they run into a wall and then all of a sudden they're a little bit out. So, you know, we got to keep an eye on those sorts of things. But, uh, you know, it also kind of gives you that opportunity to you kind of identify who you can talk to. I have guys come up, re, come to me all the time, uh, and and I'll tell them this straight up. I I'm probably one of the worst for the longest time about um, going and finding someone to talk to when I need it. Part of what's therapeutic for me is doing this, like us running the program, and and I get more out of helping everybody else. But then every once in a while, I'll hit like a brick wall, and I'm and then I'm like, well, who do I go to because Everybody else is looking to you me. You go to the president. Right. Well, and v- we, we did that. We, we did that. We, 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 do, we do that quite a bit. Does uh, the president go to the VP then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah that's, no, that's pretty much how it works. It's like the buddy system, system right? Yeah. 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 But yeah. My, my wife, Alicia, has been great as far as somebody that's really understanding about, you know, she may not understand a lot of the stuff, but she's she's there and she gives me that, you know, the outlet. I can talk to her. I'm, I don't have to be afraid to bring stuff up or mm-hmm. if I'm struggling with stuff. So she sees that and she's like, you just need to get back on the ice to get your head straight again so how, so how was the transition for you guys when you came out i mean were you were you fucked up or, or did you, i mean relatively yeah. as, I, as you went in i think i would say because we both got out at a relatively young age and you're still very naive at that point yeah. like uh you know i didn't even go to the va for a long time after i got out and everyone's like oh you should go to the va i'm like man i don't need that i'm fine you know okay. but then looking back but then, you know, I've got back problems, I've got knee problems, yeah. I've got ankle problems. These are all things I should have probably had better documented, and, it, and it's been just a fight. Uh, now I've gotten ratings from the VA on a lot of that stuff, but I'm still arguing with them on some other things. So I was going to ask you that later on. Is that yeah. still a nightmare? It is. It is. Okay. It, it's, yeah. it's better. I was going to say, it is better. it's a little better. You um, know, when, when they started talking about it, you know, uh, I, I really started to hear it hit mainstream 2016, 2017, kind of in that time frame. Um, you know, and they're talking about Vietnam vets who have never received any benefits right. and, and things like that. And they're really highlighting a lot of the horrors of like what happens in the VA. Um, a lot of that has pushed the VA to make changes. Um, and there have been a lot of changes that I've seen just, you know, in my, I don't go to them for a lot of stuff. I, I do have a rating and I do have things that I take care of, but you know, it, for the most part, I've seen the appointment process get a little bit better. It still takes forever to get an appointment, but at least you can get an appointment now. There were right. times that guys would sit on hold for three hours and never get anything. They wouldn't get any further than they did before they picked up the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, it is getting better. Um, and, you know, it's not just the VA. There's a lot of other benefits out there that, you know, weren't really around as I was getting out in 2010, um, or I didn't really hear about them. You know, my process to get to from you know military to civilian it felt pretty okay you know i didn't feel like there were a lot of bumps in the road i came out of the military with my va rating because one of those programs i had actually paid attention and went through all the stuff and can you explain the va rating because i'm not yeah so the va with. rating basically the va tells you how broken you are um, how broken and, you are and they use a number system to mm. do it okay now and is so that an assessment when you're leaving like a psychological like how do they kind of how do they tell you how broken you are? It, it's well, uh, it's, it kind of all depends on how much you're willing to tell them too. Yeah, it's so it, it's a two way thing, uh, and not to cut you off, well, no, you're but good. Um, you know, kind of where I got go back to what I said, where you know, when you're young, you're kind of naive. Like you get home or you're getting out, and you're like, dude, I just want to go home and spend time with my friends and my family, yeah, or start playing hockey again, or yeah. you know, do whatever. I don't want to spend all this time out processing or get put in med hold because you know I complained about the time I fell and hurt my knee or you know that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so where well he did the right thing and he kind of came out of the service with his rating like i had to do it years later and then i have to go back and prove well did this happen when you were in the service well that's what that's when you talk about the rating and things that you say to them do do they check and go it some of the things they told us we need to know if those are legit yep yeah so how often do you have to have a check-in or whatever it would be mine's annual i go in every year 
Um, and they kind of look at all the stuff that I have a rating for. And because of where my rating is, they check me kind of for everything else as well. Um, but they used my medical records. I was a medic. So mm -hmm. all my medical records were pretty up to date. I mean, sure. there were a couple things that were missing and I kind of had to fill those in. Um, but for guys that are infantry that are told you better not go to sick call or you're a pussy if you go to sick call or whatever, um, those guys, their medical ratings suck. And so, or their, their medical, um, documentation sucks. And so then they have to go through and like show, Oh, look, I got blown up on this date and time. And that's rec what's recorded. They never went to a medic because of it, or they never went and got seen. Yeah. They just carried on with the mission, but they didn't know that coming out of that, they got a, you know, a minor traumatic brain injury. And now they have all these other things that are going on. And so they go back and those are where things get really tough. And you go through processes like what Ryan's had to do. Would, would you run into uh, folks that would not want it when they're doing that exit interview? I guess that's what we would call them at yeah. the end of the year. And you really didn't want to tell. Like I was one yeah. of them. I'm good. Bad Everything's people, fine. Dumb people that said, "No, I'm good. I don't." I'm good. And then now looking back, I wish I'd have told them about this hand was broke. This was broke because mm -hmm. you you don't. It's not documented. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it, is there conversations with these guys? Like, dude, be up front because coming from you guys that are done. I mean, it seems like there should be people sitting there in place saying, "Make sure you tell them everything." You better know more than what it is. It almost sounds like. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot more resources like that. Um, so not only guys that are taking care of veterans that are going to the VA, but also they'll go and do, uh, you know, they'll have speakers come in, uh, you know, I don't know, they'll go down to Fort Hood and they'll, they'll kind of tell them, hey, you know, it's really important for any of you guys that are going to be, you know, ex exiting the service in the next, you know, six or 12 months or whatever the case may be. Do these things. Do it. You just, even if yeah. it's not a big deal right now, even if you, even if it's not bothering you right now, like, uh, you know, I sprained, um, uh, repeatedly sprained my ankle a lot you know and like well he said you just take some ibuprofen and go about your business That's, yeah yeah and uh you know you tough through it well and then by the time we got done with the deployment you know it wasn't hurting that bad because i was in my early 20s you know you're a little more resilient and you kind of spring back from that but then by the time i get into my 30s i'm like man I, you know mm -hmm. i could barely that's why i just had the surgeries on my ankles actually but you know if i shift my weight wrong i would yeah. fall over because right. i just have no stability left in my ankles so and he's still a hell of a skater. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. No, ask, ask. Coach would disagree with you on that. But, uh. Good thing she's not here. I get to be the I get to be the speaker. What's your coach's name? Uh, coach Bree. Okay, Coach Bree. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right. Um, and so she got brought in with Luca when we first started the organization. Yeah, I want to bring up Brad Lukowicz. Go, talk about the, uh, Luke, both of them. Yeah, Bobby yeah. your coaches and Luke, Brad Lukowicz. Brad's been here. Well, you guys mentioned it. Yeah. Brad's been here once on his own. Then he came in here one time with his wife, Kara. Okay, and yeah. it was awesome to be able to talk about the concussion stuff, right? Yep. And that's yeah. kind of what started me down a path going, and there's a lot of this going on. Not a lot, we don't know a lot about it, I think, that, but we're no more now. And when Stephen Johns came in, it was nice of him to open up and get it out there. So, but you had Brad Luca, which is uh, was he was he a coach or yeah? yeah. So, um, uh, Luco and and Bree, I'm pretty sure met with the Stars Foundation. She was connected with them, and then yeah. uh, she played in college and and kind of grew up playing hockey. And um, and so basically, Luco came in and ran a couple practices with us. You know, led our uh, led our kind of top team to go to tournaments, got them ready for tournaments and things like that. And then uh, Coach Bree was his assistant, and she helped out with the, the top team and then also helped out with some of our developing guys. Yeah. Um, and over the years, I mean, Bree's ran all of our practices, uh, especially for us developing guys. Right. Um, you know, us that couldn't skate four years ago and are now, you know, trying to play at a higher level. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it, they've both been involved. One of the best practices I've ever been to, you know, Luco ran and he skated the dog out of us. And it was, it was awesome. I mean, it was great. Yeah. And so, um, having that kind of, you know, interest from a pro level and, yeah. you know, somebody who's given back into the, the, the hockey community, giving back to veterans, um, has been awesome. Well, how many, how many people are involved? Like how, how many, uh, you, you talk about two, three different teams. Do you kind of yeah. run like a minor league team? Like where, if you're you get here and then there's a the next level, then a the next level and a next level, because I, I was going to ask you a little bit about the Lone Star Warriors. Right. It's yeah. another one. And I didn't know. Does the, do would you get players that can now go to that level or is that kind of how you guys run your program or. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we uh, so 
you know, if we have guys that kind of move up and, and they want to go play that tier one, like yeah. that really competitive, you know, I, I'm, you're familiar with the guys over there. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they they practice once a week and they're, you know, they're a little more uh, focused on the like the competitive sure. hockey. You know, yeah. if you've still got some gas in the tank for that. Yep. Um, but we're, what we'll see sometimes is some of their guys will they'll they'll come down and play like on our B team. So the, there is a kind of a two way. OK. Um, you know. Or guys dealing with injuries, uh, you know, sometimes they so they kind of get called up they, to that. They the go big on team. on on rehab stints and yeah, we, come we, down and play yeah, in our, our, C our C and then okay. our B team. Work their way back um, up. So so yeah, we have a good relationship with those guys as far as player movement going up and down and that kind of thing. So, so is there is there a difference in playing in games and then when you go to tournaments? Or are there any different qualifications or? It doesn't matter when you get, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you have yeah, to be a so, certain level? Or? Um, for like local games, charity games, yeah. things like that, um, a lot of times we'll have guys who don't have disabled ra- uh, ratings at all. Like the VA basically, either they didn't go through the VA process or the VA said, you're good, right? Uh, you yeah, don't need okay. a rating. Okay. Um, and so they'll still play beer league or rec league with us. They'll do charity games. They come in and kind of do things with the organization. They'll volunteer in different things that we do. Um, but they can't play in the national tournaments. The national tournaments where we actually travel to go to uh, play a USA hockey USA hockey sanctioned event. Okay. Um, those tournaments you have to have a disability from the VA, so you have to have that rating. All right, yep. um, and that can be for mi- anything. Too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. minimum of ten percent. It could be anything that the VA says, but you have to have that rating in order to play. Okay. Um, and then those guys, what we do is it's pretty organic, but basically our, our coaching staff and some of our, our staff that have been around for a while will sit down and build a roster as we go to different events. Based on the people who say they want to go, we'll take skill levels, we'll try and build out teams. Uh, we all know pretty much where everybody's at. Um, and then we'll take, you know, just a B team to this tournament or just a C team to that tournament or like in St. Louis, Pizzle we look sandbaggers. We look three teams. Uh, you know, the, it's everybody it's hockey, does. So there's yeah. everybody does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and we've you know, we've gone to tournaments where we didn't even pick, you know, we'll put a team together and well, they'll just put us in a division. Yeah. And we've had that happen and we've. Oh, these guys are from Texas. They can't play. And then they put yeah. us in. And then yeah. we yeah. kick the crap yeah. out of everybody, yep. you know. Yeah. Just and so you get a lot of you know, but it's fun because you start to get those rivalries built up from things like that. Yeah. Um, so and, and I think that's a good question, a good point to kind of compare us to some other programs that yeah. are out there. I don't know if you have that in your notes for something to talk about later on, or but, I got uh, so much shit here yeah. in my notes. <laughs> but go ahead and take it all. Take so, it. So you know, we we uh, we're kind of loose with our rosters. You know, it's kind of a who's available to go. Yeah. You know, so if we're hey, we're going to St. Louis in January. Who all wants to go? If we get enough people to sign up to take three teams, then we'll we'll piece them together. Most of the time, we have enough for two. The yeah. St. Louis one has been a good one that we've so had. So then do you try to load up a team? We try to distribute it pretty evenly. We you want do. everyone to have a good time. You know, if our yep. B team goes, but the C and the D team get the crap beat out of them, they're maybe not going to have as much fun. So, okay. uh, but then we don't want to stick someone that's too good on, you know, the C that's or the that D team. That's so, yeah. that Yeah. So, um, you know, we look at it, though, if it's a new guy that's just coming onto the team, a lot of times, hey, you're the new guy, unless they're just, like, super good. Hey, we're sticking you on the D team, and everybody can be mad, but we'll be like, "He's new. We didn't know," you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, but then you look at some of the other big programs that that are out there. So St. Louis is a really good example of uh, they have a great relationship with the Blues. So they're actually the St. Louis Blues Warriors. Mm-hmm. They have an A, a B, a C, and a D team. Okay. They get an annual evaluation, and they get placed on a team for that calendar year. And, and the evaluation are, as a player, yes, yeah. oh, that and right? that and that's okay. done by Blues alumni and past Would, coaches. Okay, and yeah. and so they'll actually have a. It's basically a third party, right? Come in, they'll watch a series of of practices, and then they say this player needs to be in the A team. This Great. player needs to be in yeah. the D team, and they kind of put everybody in, and then you're locked into that team for a year. And then next year they do the evaluation oh, again, yeah, sure. and you can move up a level, you can move down a level, they can kind of figure out where you need to be. And that's how they build their rosters. And so whenever they go to a tournament, they say, okay, we're going to take B and C. Well, they already know who they are, right? Uh-huh. right? Whereas like I've played on the D team, the C team, and the B team just because of the way things have played out yeah. and then how I've improved you know, over the time learning how to play as well. And so, like, when I'm in a B-level tournament, I'm like, okay, guys, I'm the fourth-line grinder guy. Like, if you cut me for a couple shifts, that's fine. Uh-huh. It's all good. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm here to play and skate with you guys. I'm going to try and contribute and just try yeah. not to look like a fool. 
But then when I play in like a D level tournament, I'm actually playing back on defense. I'm trying to make passes and help other players. And, you know, even as a a quote unquote ringer, maybe like the, the idea is we're all here for the disabled veteran part of it for camaraderie. Yeah. It's fun to win and we want to win, but it's, and it's competitive, but it's, it's also a charity deal. Like it's not, we're not out here to hurt anybody. We're not out here to like just kick the snot out of another team, you know, and, and, and all that. So, well, it's pretty cool. So when you have veterans, vets playing against vets. Oh, yeah. I am I just have a heart because I've played in that, and you guys know the guns and hoses. Yeah. They, they play. Okay, so I've, I've played in that, and, and I know a couple of guys that are the firemen, so I would be on the fireman's team. Yeah. And I'd always say I, they carry hoses with water. I want to be with the dudes that got the guns with the bullets. I want to go play. <laughs> <laughs> it never really works out that way. But yeah. It gets competitive. It oh, gets yeah. heated. And Especially so, PD versus, versus yes. fire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I'm wondering, because when you know I was looking into this stuff, I'm like, I always flash back to that, to those games. You yeah. know? Like I said, there's a there's competition. That's what it is. But it kind of crosses the line once in a while. Yeah. I would think with vets, there'd be, is there any of that that yes. go on in we, tournaments and things like that? We've Absolutely. Got some teams that <laughs> or is, there, there's, is it kind of supposed to be, you know, listen? It's supposed to be. Um, but things get. Yeah. A little heated every once in a while. I know whenever we register for a tournament and they fu- they put out the the brackets, you know, there's always those teams we're immediately looking for yeah. that we've had a rough game with or something that got you know. Yeah. Tampa it's Bay still hockey. From, yeah, you know. it's still hockey. Yeah, that's a personal. Yeah, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, it's still hockey. You know, and and I was actually thinking of like the UHL, right? So there's a, a local tournament every year. Uh, UHL comes together and. Uh, the they, United Heroes League. They, they split yeah. everybody into their branches. And so you're playing oh. Army versus Marines, sure. yeah. Navy, yeah. Air Force, right? And the Army Marines game will get a little chippy, or the you know Navy Marines game will get a little chippy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's still hockey. Like, Usually yeah. the Marines. We're just, yeah. They're the, you know. Yeah. They take a lot of penalties. They take a lot of penalties. It's not, yeah, they take a lot of penalties. What are you trying to say? Uh, Marines. They, it's, there's just yeah. a problem right yeah. there? Between, you know, crayons and anger issues, there's something <laughs> there. <laughs> well, you know, I, one thing I will kind of highlight from that, too, is the best part about this is, so me and Wally were both in the Army, right? So yeah. I've still got all my Army buddies, you know, that I was close with. But doing this, we've got Navy, Air Force, Marines, Army. We've got some Coast Guard guys yeah. in the mix every once in a while. Is now you're, that group that you're relating to, we're not telling the same old army stories. We're getting to hear about well, this is what I did when I was on deployment on a submarine or on a mm-hmm. on an aircraft carrier, or you know, I was in the Marines or I did this in the Air Force. You know, we got guys that are pilots. You know, yeah. we've got all kinds of all kinds of backgrounds on our team, yeah. um, and so that makes that even more interesting when we start, you know, post game hanging out in the parking lot, sure. you know, or when we're traveling. You know, we kind of try to mix up, you know, who we make roommates when we do travel tournaments and. And uh, and it's really cool to hear those other the other branches kind of tell their stories as well. You know, yeah. we all bust each other's chops all the time. You know, like with the crayons, and the <laughs> chair force, and the navy, and everything. But yeah. you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's it's all in good fun. But if you mess with one of your, you know, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we've all got each other's back. So ha- yeah. have you got into any brawls? <laughs> or not, well, why, so why is there aqua tyrant? So and you're sitting over here, so there has been one. Um, so the good thing with these tournaments is usually they keep you from getting too far into it before it gets out of hand. Um, but I mean, the other thing is we're all wearing cages and, you know, it, most there's of most of us. They come so you, off. You got visors and things like that, but you're not punching guys in the face. You know, okay. are, you, are you are you getting into a corner and maybe scrumming with a guy for yeah. a while? Yeah, okay. Yeah, those, okay. those definitely happen. Now, the best part is, so you do have, you know, you've got that macho yeah. vibrato, whatever you want to call it, from being in the military. So... Sometimes we get new guys that come in and they're, you know, they've never skated before, but they're like, yeah, this is hockey. I'm going to kick everyone's ass, you know, or whatever. And then something will happen during a game and they'll be like, oh, you know, uh, man, I was going to kick the crap out of that guy. You know, and then we'll go back and watch video because everybody's got live bar now. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, I know. And uh, yeah. I think it was uh, you or Eddie on, when, when you had the Belfours on, you guys were talking about watching footage from the alumni game and you yeah. were like, Boy, we're a lot slower than we really thought we were. <laughs> we get a lot of that. Like, we don't even want to share the videos. And, it's- uh, <clears throat> but now, in the defense of all of that, uh, so I coach a U18 team that yeah. we travel around the country with, right? And a lot of the times, in order for me to be able to show our players what they need to do differently and systems of other teams that are going to play, I have to go to Live Mark. Yeah. 
And I, it took me a while. And I, when I watch other teams playing before I, I guess you'd call it pre-scout and what they do on their power play, yeah. things like that. And I'd say to the other coach, I'd tell Addy, I'm like, we should kick the shit out of this team. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't that the same team I was watching. View. Yeah. It's awful. Like yes. I've stopped trying to judge other players by that. So people that do actually watch us play or you guys play on live barn we're not as bad as it really looks yeah let's, absolutely let's that's what i keep telling everybody way. too i, I yeah. tell everybody that it's yeah, you know, they, maybe yeah, not so much true for <laughs> yeah. me but yeah. <laughs> yeah so hockey is not a cheap sport no how do you fund your your how does that work how does the funding work for you guys and i know the stars foundation yeah uh you know i know that they're they're part of it and they they, they help out with you guys but how, how does that work for you guys well, to kind of highlight what the Stars Foundation has done for us has been great. You know, we've done, uh, I think, last year and in 2019, we got the Veterans Day grant. Uh, yeah. So we got the 50-50 raffle at the game. And then when they auctioned off the jerseys that the guys wore during warm-ups, we mm -hmm. get the proceeds from that sort of thing. And that has gone a real long way in helping to support us. Uh, you know, we got to pay for ice time. Uh, you know, right now we're only doing one practice a month. Just ice time isn't cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but stars have been keep you know, saying that to, please do yeah ice yeah. time is not cheap. I enjoy oh, it, 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 is. it really isn't uh, i well, mean it, it and it just keeps getting I, i've been a part of the organization since 2018 when it started i was like one of the first players that had never skated before and so i had no idea like you know as just a regular guy how much hockey was and now my son plays which was kind of my you know push to play um but just he's a goalie too so anyways <laughs> There's all that. Um, but realizing on the backside for us to do a charity game, how much it costs for ice for an hour just to dedicate one rink for us to have enough people to come in. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, from the funding side, we uh, Dallas Stars Foundation has been fantastic. Right. We've gotten a couple of grants from them. Um, but not only that, like they do, uh, they give us stars tickets. Right. Yep. And I, I, I didn't get a total count of how many we got last season, but it was well over 200 tickets that we were able to pass on to our players that just adds to our camaraderie stuff. You know, we're not skating. Now we get to go do this thing that we enjoy and that brought us all together. We get to go watch the pros do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and we get to hang out there and we get to, you know, hang out before the game and after the game and, and all of that. Um, but we also, we've had some independent donors um, and, and that's been extremely helpful. Um, and then we do charity games from time to time where yeah. we'll put an event on and, you know, we'll do like a red versus white, or now that we've got our greens, we'll do a green versus red, right? Um, and, you know, do things like that. Uh, and then sometimes we'll do those and we'll give all the money to other organizations. So, like uh, HVSD. Homeless Veteran Services of Dallas is one we did a charity game for with uh, the Fort Worth Patriots. They're another veterans team yeah. over in Fort yeah. Worth. We, yeah. uh, we, usually, we usually square off for vet, uh, Literally. charity games and stuff. Yeah. Like Literally. Yeah, we, you know, we have a lot of we have a Good. lot of overlap on the rosters. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of them play with us, and then uh, so they do a lot of like adult beer league type yeah. stuff better. We do a lot of tournaments better. So okay. a lot of us, I mean, we almost brought all those jerseys in too. We, yeah. you know, we both play on both. You got teams, some good so. looking jerseys. We were talking about like, okay, what do we like? What do we do? And we're like, well, we'll just keep it with Dallas for, yeah. for this yeah. time around. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but it, it's been awesome because like they're, they don't do the disabled veteran thing. They're open to all veterans, right? And they do local leagues and, and things like that really, really well. Um, and so their teams, you know, it's some of us are like, oh, who do I play for, right? Like I play for Dallas this, this time, maybe next time I'll play for the Patriots or, you know, because we play with both organizations pretty yep. regularly. Um, but there are guys that are diehard Dallas and there are guys that are diehard Patriots. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so that makes it fun too. You got that internal kind of local ri rivalry with 22 sheets of ice here in Dallas, the veteran hockey community is growing. And do you have a home rank or do you guys play it in all of them? We're all of them. Farmers is our farmers home rank. Is our yeah. Yeah. It is. We're, uh, okay. well, I'm still waiting on the guys over there to get our banners up on the wall, but we, you know, we've collected a handful of banners over the yep. years and, so they're we've had our alumni there. room. You've been in our alumni yeah. room. Yeah, we've had that. I don't know, four or five years or so. I'm still waiting for Bob Basson and Gerald Diddick to get pictures up there for us too. So yeah. I know how yeah. it goes. <laughs> yeah, it would, make it, it would be nice in there. Yeah. Um, how about social media wise? How how do people get in contact? Because I heard you mention gear. Uh, people donate gear also. Yeah. So but how we, can they just donate? Like you have websites and Twitters and Instagram and all this kind of stuff. We, we have all three. Now's uh, the time. You can uh, you can look us up on uh, www DallasWarriorsHockey.com. I always mess that one up. Mm. I always forget the hockey it. at the end. You passed it. Uh, 
we're also on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. Uh, so we, you know, we'll have people just reach out. Hey, I got all this old gear. I don't play anymore. Do you guys want it? Yeah. Uh, and we'll do one or two things with that. We mentioned the United Heroes League a little bit uh, earlier too about the tournament we do here locally. Uh, they're actually based in Minnesota, and they're uh, they're mission is providing for military families and their kids specifically so we don't have a lot of use for kids gear obviously because we're all a bunch of old yeah. veterans yeah um but we've collected those in the past and so this last summer we went up to a tournament we took the trailer uh, we donated a whole trailer worth of uh you know kids gear and stuff uh and some adult gear uh to their facility up there but it's all free of charge if you've got kids if you're in the military and um you know, you're looking to get your kid into any sports. They don't do just hockey. They do baseball, lacrosse, yeah. basketball, those sorts of things. But you can go on to their website, which is unitedheroesleague.com or org. I can't remember which one it is. Google United Heroes League and you can figure it out. Yeah. Um, but you can request that. And even as an adult, you can request gear as well. So we uh, sometimes we refer our new guys over to them as well to uh, request that kind of stuff. And uh, and they're great. Uh, so their local chapter here has been, uh, you know, kind of who we've worked with quite a bit. We play yep. the tournament. Um uh, I'm, I've helped uh, Will, our camera guy over here, has uh, helped run that tournament in the past. So uh, a lot of good stuff they're doing over there. Um, Facebook's probably biggest. Uh, we're probably most act active on Facebook and Instagram. Um, but the DallasWarriorsHockey.com is a great place to go to. We try to keep um, like updates and like the sponsors and who we've yeah. worked with and things like on. that. Um, on the website as well, and then uh, there's a donate link there if, if well, anybody at the wants end to of give. The, at the end of the year, do you have like a number? Like, what does it cost you guys to run your program at the end of the year? Ice and everything involved. Uh, this year was a little bit more than previous years. Uh, probably about thirty-five thousand for us to run the whole organization yeah. this year. Yeah. So all the help, any help, absolutely is appreciated. That was yeah. one practice a month. Uh, us going to a few tournaments we took two or three teams to yeah. uh, we see that kind of growing a little bit more going into the next year hopefully um, we had a lot more interest in taking three teams to St. Louis this year you know last year it was a lot more of a come on guys let's go you know yeah. and I, we kind of had to go find everybody this year it was just everybody just wants to go so. well the, the bottom line in all of this is this is bigger than hockey Oh, you absolutely. Know, this, absolutely. I mean, that's, this isn't just about a bunch yeah. of guys playing beer league yeah. I mean these are guys that served our country and need to be helped or taken care yeah. of and get as a, much a lot of it's player funded too i mean you know that's just the what the organization took on to get things like ice time and things like that because we don't charge for ice mm -hmm. um but like you know, travel things sometimes guys pay for their own travel or you know we don't not everybody has the right you know equipment and stuff like that and so yeah. they go buy stuff for um jerseys and things like that so a, a lot of it is player funded um, and then the organization helps out where we can to kind of keep things going locally, and then we pay for things as the tournaments come up too. Well, it's an in, it's an incredible organization, and in what you guys do, and you know, I've talked, like I said, I talked to Brad Lukowicz about it, and he's got raving reviews of what you guys all do and uh, what it's for and what it's all about. So um, I was looking at our uh, original jerseys because we've been through a couple different jerseys at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, we got the four 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 angels on one side. Oh, no, you really? Uh, yeah, from from uh, the initial jerseys that we launched out. I mentioned um, I wanted to bring that up before, and I want to. Yeah. And I want to. So, four 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 angel is a, a charity that a friend and I, Kevin Howell and I, have. And it, it <clears throat> years ago, the Dallas Stars had they asked me to go, and they gave me some hockey sticks and some balls and things like that. I said, hey, there's a uh, advocacy, children's advocacy center. And um, oh, Garland, I don't remember where it was. Anyway, Kevin and I rode out there, rode our Harleys out there, playing with a bunch of kids and stuff like that. And we walked outside, and, and we were kind of looking for stuff. And I said, this is it. We're going to start working with the Embassy Center and stuff like that. So anyway, it graduated that. Now we give bicycles to whoever we can. We went to a, a military place over off of uh, Highway 183, and we had a big truck. And so we took it over there and uh, took a bunch of bicycles over there. And there was... Uh, one of the mom, one of the mothers, and she was enlisted, and her husband was off, and she was crying. And I'm like, something wrong? Like, wrong size bike? We got plenty of bikes, you know? Yeah. And, and she said, no. She goes, we would have never been able to afford this to give to our son for Christmas. And I was like, what? And, and it just, for me, I'm like, really? You know, what you folks are asked to do? And that. And so yeah. that was like, we continue down that road. And, and it's just, it, 
blows me away, to be totally honest with you, those kind of things. So anyway, the 444 Angel yeah. is, um, and Kevin renamed it like five different times, and, and <laughs> it has something to do with the grandma now. <clears throat> and I get a text message. He's in Florida right now. I don't know. Once every two weeks, as soon as the time on his phone says 444, he sends me a picture of it. So he's very proud of it. So we both are what we do. Nice. So, um, yeah, any, anything you guys do, uh, we'd love to partner with you guys as well. Yeah. Uh, no, if I you need volunteers, that. we got yeah. guys we can pull together, and yeah. I'd love to see us do more together. That'd be fun. We actually just had a bunch of bikes uh, uh, delivered like a few days ago, a little thing that we'll do out there. Um, uh, anyway, um, I really appreciate you guys coming in, and again, we have utmost respect for you guys and you know keith wellman president ryan young vp of the dallas warriors um thank you so much for doing this and everything that you do uh, especially for the vets and i know it's not easy right yep um, well we appreciate you having us on uh, you know we were a little gun shy we were kind of looking at all your past uh you know visitors we're like man we're like the first non like hockey hall of fame stanley cup champion yeah, you guys are you guys <laughs> in a more important hall of uh, fame to be honest with you but uh but yeah it's, it's kind of it's really cool to get to see all those names that have been yeah. here before us and yeah. then you know we kind of get to come in here and yeah. talk your off for an hour and uh you know hey, we really appreciate you're it. welcome anytime uh, anytime you guys got anything coming up and and i know that uh, there's a lot of people interested more than you guys probably even know and so we all we all appreciate what you have done in the past and what you're doing right now so thank you very much for coming in yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate, appreciate you it, having us and thanks for the platform we appreciate are good it. and uh, another episode in the books of sudden floods thank you for listening and watching